what is going on guys and welcome to my ultimate beginner's guide to barrows now in this guide I am actually gonna be covering pretty much everything from 100% noob to a little bit more of an experience to all the way experience and my reason for doing this is because barrows can be a good money maker whether you're level 65 combat or level 126 combat it really depends on how you do it and how efficient you are now Barrows is actually a mini game, but it does appear on the boss log. If you check your ring of wealth, you can see your Barrows kill count there counting as boss kills. So that's why it's going to be in this series. And I have done a couple guides on Barrows before, but they haven't been this detailed. And with the influx of newer players and lower level players for mobile, I think this would be a good time to bring back a Barrows guide that you can start from scratch with pretty much nothing. So before we get into everything, I'll give you a little bit of a rundown on Barrows. Barrows is a mini game where you will have to kill six different brothers who are the Barrows brothers. And in killing each one of these brothers, you will have a chance to loot a chest at the end of the run, which will give you a chance at Barrows items. Now you can get Barrows items based on which brothers you kill. So obviously you want to kill every brother. But for example, if you only kill the brother Darok, then when you loot the chest, you will only have a chance to get Darok's items. This is why you want to kill all six brothers no matter what. Now obviously the best part of any minigame or boss in old school runescape is going to be the loot. So we'll go ahead and cover that first. Now like I said earlier, you're only going to be able to get the Barrow's armor of which the brother you killed. So this video is going to be entirely based around killing all six brothers as you always should kill all six brothers. Each set of armor has its own set effect which I will cover while we're going over the loot. First up is going to be Aram, which is composed of the hood, the robe top, the robe skirt, and the Aram staff. Now this particular armor set will give you a chance at lowering your opponent's strength level if you have the full set equipped. A good bonus about this is the Aram staff actually gives you plus 5% to magic damage, but it's not really used that much. As far as this set goes, it generally runs around 4.1 mil for the whole set. Next up is going to be Darok set, which is composed of a helm, a plate body, a plate legs, and a great axe. And for this set effect, just about every one hit point that is lost by you, you will be able to hit 1% higher. So basically, the less HP you have, the higher that you're going to hit. Now this is a very popular armor set for training in Nightmare Zone, as you can accumulate a lot of high hits and get a lot of experience. Currently at the time of this video, the total cost for this set is right around 3.5 to 3.6 mil. Next up is going to be Guthin's set, and this is a popular replacement to the Ceridome and God Sword, as it does have a lifesteal perk. Basically, every one in four hits, you will have a chance to steal the life of which you've taken. So basically, if you hit a 35 on an NPC, and the set effect activates, you will then heal that 35. At the time of this video, Guthin's armor set is right around 5 mil. Next up is going to be the ranged brother Carol, and this set effect is pretty much useless throughout the entire game, but the set effect does have a 25% chance of lowering the player's agility by 20%. This is a popular armor set as it doesn't give negative combat stats, so if you're in an instance where you need magic defense, Carol's is what you're going to be wanting to use. It is currently the most expensive Barrow's piece, which is the leather top. It also has the coif, the leather skirt, and the crossbow, and the set currently goes for right around 3 million GP. Next up is going to be Torag's set, and this is composed of the helm, the plate body, the plate legs, and Torag's hammers. This set effect has a 25% chance of lowering your victim's run energy by 20%. Also pretty much useless, but this set is very good for lower level players, right at 70 defense to get some very good armor with some very good defense statistics. Currently, the set is running for about 850 to 900,000 GP. And last but not least is the Varak set, which is composed of a helm, a brazard, plate skirt, and a flail. Now, this is a very popular armor set as it does have a 25% chance of ignoring your target's armor, defense, and protection prayers, so you could potentially hit very high through any of those. This set is popular for bossing such as Ceridome and God Wars, the Calphite Queen, and Callisto because Callisto is a very high defense. At the current time, this set is going for around 1.5 to 1.6 million GP. Additionally, from the Barrow's loot chest, you can also see coins, mind runes, chaos runes, death runes, blood runes, bolt racks, key halves, and dragon med helms. You can also see elite clues from Barrow's, which is one of the best ways to get elite clues in the game. The chances are around 1 in 33, I believe. And your chances of getting this loot depend on your loot potential, which I will show you later, but basically as a quick starter, loot potential is how many of the NPCs in the crypt you kill, and this can be between crypt spiders, crypt rats, skeletons, and blood worms. We'll cover that in just a bit. So if you're wondering exactly how the loot works, I'll explain that now. 
As far as the Barrow's equipment goes, the equation for this is 1 in 450 minus 58 times the amount of brothers killed. So as far as that goes, you're basically going to have a chance at loot if you kill one brother, one in 102 times. But if you kill all six, you will then receive six rolls on the drop table because it is rolling from each brother's drop table, which drops your chances down to one in 17. So basically, every one in 17 chests, you have a chance at getting a Barrow's item. But then how does the rune loot work? Well, the rune loot is based on loot potential, and the loot potential is based on how many NPCs within the catacombs that you kill. So basically, you want to get your loot potential up to 88% every time. Why not 100? Well, bolt racks, key halves, and dragon med helms aren't very sought after at Barrows. So basically, to be more efficient and do more runs per hour, you'll only want to be getting 88% because that is the maximum chance that you'll be able to get bloods, deaths, chaos, and mind runes. Now, as far as extra loot goes, if you do have the Mauritania Hard Diaries complete, you will have the ability to receive 50% extra runes from the Barrows chest. So, it is highly recommended that if you're going to camp Barrows for a long time, you do want to get those Mauritania Hard Diaries done. Before we get into gear setups, recommended levels, and actually completing a Barrows run, I'm going to show you guys how to get there if you've never been there. Now the first and most direct route to Barrows is going to be the Barrows Teleport, which requires level 83 magic and access to the Archaeus Spellbook, but if you don't have either of those, you can buy the Barrows Teleport Tablets on the Grand Exchange. They are a little bit expensive, but they will significantly cut down your run times. Alternatively, if you do have the Mauritania Hard Diaries done, you can use the Mauritania Legs 3 or 4 to grant unlimited teleports to Berg de Rot, but it still does take a little bit of a run to get to Barrows, so your most efficient way to get there is going to be the Barrows Teleport Tablet. Now I'm going to get into what kind of different setups that you can use. Now you don't have to go particularly with each of these setups, but you can use any combination of what is available to you at the time. You might have the magic level for something, but not the range level for something, so you can certainly switch that out with something you do have the level for. As for recommended stats and levels, I'm going to start out with magic. Now at the bare minimum, you're going to want to have at least level 50 magic with access to the Ivan Blast and the Ivan Staff which is received after completing the Underground Pass quest. Additionally, at 50 magic with 55 Slayer, you can also use the Slayer Dart using that staff that you can get from any Slayer Master, but you will also want to put a Slayer's Enchantment on this staff which will boost the damage. You can buy this from the Grand Exchange, it only costs two or three thousand GP. Following this is going to be level 59, the Fire Blast spell, which requires death runes, air runes, and fire runes. Up at level 75 magic, you will be using a Trident of the Seas or Trident of the Swamp, which is a very good staff to use here because of its attack speed and damage. You can also use the Fire Wave at level 75 magic, and at level 95 magic, you can use the Fire Surge spell, which when paired with a Tome of Fire increases the damage a lot, which will give you very quick kill times. As for a recommended ranging level, I recommend you to have at least level 61 range which will give you access to the rune crossbow. And with the rune crossbow you can use broad bolts which are the equivalent of adamant and they are much much cheaper. Past this, at level 75 range you will have access to the toxic blowpipe which is a very good weapon to use here whether when you're getting loot potential or just killing Aram. As for your melee stats, you're going to want to have a minimum of level 60 attack for the Dragon Scimitar, and a little bit better than this, 70 attack would be nice for the Abyssal Whip and the Abyssal Tentacle because it does help to get your loot potential up with a melee weapon rather than the Blowpipe, but if the Blowpipe is all you have access to, or if you'd rather use that, that will do just fine as well for the loot potential. Additionally, you will also want to have a prayer level of at least 43 for the Protect from Melee spell. If you have 43 prayer, you can also use protect from magic and protect from missiles at level 37 and 40 respectively. You will be using protection prayers here, so it's very important to have this stat. And last, as for an alternative method, you can use a black salamander. Black salamanders require 70 magic, attack, and range to use, and they are best used with Herolander tar, which will do a decent amount of damage. This is actually the cheapest way to do a Barrow's run, but it's not always the most effective. Now we can move on to the gear setups. As far as gear setups go for Barrows, it doesn't really matter what you use, and I'll explain why in a little bit, but the most that you're going to be using is magic. You're going to use magic to kill five of the brothers, and ranged or melee to kill the last brother, depending on which one is your higher stat. Now since you're going to be using magic the majority of the time, your best friend here is going to be magical damage. 
Now the way to increase your magical damage is through different items throughout the game. The most simple one to get and equip is going to be the Occult Necklace, which will increase your magic damage by 10%, but this does require a magic level of 70 to use, so if you can't use it yet, don't sweat it. You can also increase your magical damage by using the Ancestral Armor Set or Tormented Bracelet, but those are pretty expensive items, so once again, if you can't afford those, don't sweat that either. You can also increase your magical damage by an additional 2% with the imbued god capes that you get from the Mage Arena 2 quest. But if you don't have that, you can fill it out with something else. So let's say that I am down on my luck, I don't have much cash, but I have a little to get through some barrows. I'll show you guys a gear setup that I would particularly use in this case. Now, this setup isn't exactly what I would use, but it's something that you could consider using because I am max combat and I do have a max house, so I can use my construction cape to teleport to my house, recharge my stats after every run, and be fine for the next run. But as for you guys, if you are getting into barrows or having some trouble deciding on what you want to do, here's a gear setup for you guys. Now, I'm going to be using Graceful, which is the hood, the top, the pants, and the boots, because it's not really going to affect me in any way, but it will keep some of my weight down. As you can see here, only 5 kg, so my run energy will last a little bit longer. As far as the magic damage increasing items that I'll be using in this setup, it is going to be a imbued Ceridome and God Cape and the Occult Necklace, which gives me an additional 12% to magic damage. As for the offhand, you can leave that as the Dragon Defender, as your accuracy does not matter here because of the one magic level between the five Barrows Brothers that you're going to be killing with magic. Barrows Gloves and a Berserker's Ring to help out with the loot potential kills. It will speed them up just a bit. Over in the inventory, I also have a Fire Cape, an Abyssal Whip, and a Salve Amulet. The Salve Amulet can be used on the skeletons in the crypts to further speed up your loot potential time because they are considered undead. As for the ranging gear, I have a Bandos Bless top and bottom and a Toxic Blowpipe to use on Aram to increase my range accuracy a little bit. As for everything else, 6 prayer potions, which I don't actually need because I do have 99 prayer, but you may. I also have 10 sharks in there just in case I might let my prayer drop or if I take some damage in the catacombs by the monsters roaming around in there. Barrows teleports to get back to Barrows and a construction cape to teleport to my house and recharge my stats after each run. Additionally, if you want to recharge your stats after each run, you can also take a Ring of Dueling, go to Clan Wars, and go in and out of the White Portal, which will reset all of your stats. And last, I want to press this issue, do not forget your spade. You will need a spade to break into the Barrows Brothers Crypts. There is one that spawns just outside of where the Barrows Brothers are, and you can pick them up, but nonetheless, it still triggers me when I forget a spade, and I'm ready to start my Barrows run, but I gotta go grab one. So, don't forget your spade. Again, if you do, there is a spawn right outside you can grab one. So now on the screen you can see the layout of the Barrows Brothers Crips. And we're going to want to do these Barrows Brothers in a certain order to minimize our gear switches and maximize our efficiency. Now the way that I do this, so I only have to switch my gear once while killing the Melee Brothers into Aram, is going to be Darok, then Guthin, then Carol, then Torag, then Varak, and then I will switch to my range gear and kill the final brother Aram. So I always do it in this order because it seems to be the fastest for me. Throughout killing the Barrows Brothers, one of these crypts is going to lead you down into the chamber below, which is the catacombs where you're going to get your loot potential. So once you come across this Barrows Brother, you're going to want to skip this chamber and just continue on in the same order. After you have finished killing the five Barrows Brothers that are in their crypts, you will then want to head back to the Barrows Brother that will take you down into the catacombs and enter the catacombs. So now once you have completed killing all of the Barrows Brothers, you will then want to go down into the crypt. And up on the screen now you can see the instance map of what the Barrows Brothers crypt looks like. Now once you get down here you're going to have to go through a series of doors and navigate your way towards the center of the crypt which is where the loot chest is located. Now once you break into the Barrows Brothers catacombs, there is only one possible way you can go. What you'll want to do is follow this door and keep going through the doors. Now once you're moving through the chamber, you're going to want to keep an eye on the center doors. The center doors are where you're going to enter, and once you reach the center door that will allow you access into the chest room, you're going to have to complete a short puzzle. The puzzle is very simple, but it can be annoying while you're getting attacked. Once you memorize the puzzles, you can get it done very quickly. The example of the puzzles are going to be on the screen now. So these are the puzzles that you will have to complete. They are very simple, but like I said, they can be annoying if you're getting attacked. 
Sometimes you'll have to time it just right with the hit and click on the puzzle and then you will unlock the door. If you do get the puzzle wrong, the catacombs will shift around you and you will once again have to find your way towards the center to the new center door that will allow you access. Now while you're running through the catacombs, your sixth Barrow's brother may pop up and you might have the opportunity to kill it as you're making your way towards the center. This isn't always the case though, but if you do make it to the center chest without killing your sixth Barrow's brother, it will pop up when you try to loot the chest. So make sure you don't double click the loot chest or you're going to lose one of the rolls on the Barrow's brother's drop table. Just be patient, click once, kill the last Barrow's brother, and then loot the chest. So I have shown you guys how to get to Barrows, what kind of gear you can use, what kind of stats you might use, the layout of the catacombs and the crypts and the Barrows environment itself. I think I have given you guys enough information to get started, but now I will do a Barrows run and I will talk you guys through the run as I go through it. Alright, so I've used my Barrows teleport tablet and it puts you just about right here. One of these squares around here is where the teleport will go. And first thing I'm going to do is come up here. And I am going to break into the Darok Crypt first, turn on my Protect for Melee, and search a chest. So here we found a hidden tunnel. This is where I will enter the catacombs down below. So I'm going to skip this room and head on to my next one. Over here is going to be Guthan's tunnel. And I'm going to come down, check the chest, and Guthan's going to pop up. And I'm going to go ahead and kill him with whatever magic style that I'm using. Guthan is down. I'm going to move down here to Carol, which is the Ranger brother. And for this one, you're going to be one using Protect from Range. Check the chest. And kill away. And once again, Carol's magic level is also level 1, so it's going to be fine for you to use magic in here as well, as you can see some other players down here doing so. If you don't want to use any charges, he is pretty weak to melee as well, so you can melee Carol. But as for the easiest way, it's always going to be magic. Next brother is going to be Torag. Once again, going to activate the Protect from Melee prayer. And go ahead and finish off this brother. And on to the last melee brother is going to be Varak. Now this one can take some of your HP because once again his set effect does hit through all armor and protection prayers. So you can take some damage in this one. So on to the last Barrow's brother that is topside, it's going to be Aram. I'm going to go ahead and switch to my range gear, and I did forget an assembler or an accumulator. Not a big deal, but you can just go ahead and pick up your ammunition once you're done. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my magic gear, and now I'm going to head to the Darok Tunnel, which is where our crypt entrance was going to be down to the catacombs. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my melee gear for here. Head down and enter the catacombs. So from here you can see that I have four doors in this room. These three here have examine options, which means I cannot go through them. So this door here is the one that I'm going to enter. And I'm going to follow this passageway around until I see one of the center doors that is marked with open. So here's my open door. I'm going to check this. Complete the puzzle. Like I said earlier, this can be a little annoying. So what you want to do here in this situation is wait for the hit check the puzzle and complete it and go in 
Now the skeletons are going to be easiest to get your KC on if you're using your salve amulet because you will get that bonus dent damage against undead creatures but usually what I do is I just go in and out of these doors until I kill enough to reach that 88% loot potential which you can see over here underneath the mini map. Alright so now since I have one Barra's brother left to kill my rewards potential is at 82 and killing that brother will push me over that 88% threshold so I'm going to go ahead and switch back to my mage gear Get some prayer ready because this is going to be Darok. He can hit a little bit hard. Search the chest. He's going to pop up. And Barrow's run is completed. And now I can loot the chest and see what I got. So 58 blood runes, 986 coins, and some bolt racks. Not a very good roll. Now my loot potential did end up being over 88% which allowed me to get those bolt racks so if you're at 88% or under you will not see those. Ideally you want to be at 88 but if you go over that is fine. I'm going to go ahead and teleport out to my player owned house, recharge my stats and teleport back to Barrows for another run. So that is going to do it for this Barrows guide everybody. I hope that I have been able to give you a good starting point for Barrows. It is a very easy mini game or boss if you want to call it that to make some decent money at whether you're a lower level account, mid level or a high level account. If you like this video and it helped point you in the right direction to get in some Barrows KC, please go ahead and tap that like button down below. It really helped the video's popularity. And if you haven't done so yet, please tap that subscribe button on your way out. All of your support means a ton to me. You can also check out my Patreon, which there is a link in the description below. Any pledges that you guys may make will go towards my channel and helping me create better and more frequent content. I will see you guys on the next video. Take it easy, everybody.